welcome to Charm Grammy Crochet. Today uh, is Sunday, so this will probably go up on Monday. Uh, and so welcome to the Coke bottle room. That's how I'm going to refer to this room when I go record in here. Uh, <coughs> right now, this just happens to be a really good recording space. And I don't have to go up to the third floor. <laughs> so that's why I've been recording in here. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So, welcome. If you are new, I appreciate you being here. I hope you continue to come back. If you're an old friend, thanks for coming back. I appreciate that. Um, today, we just have some ketchup and some, uh, what am I doing today? And knit happens and just a few chit-chatty things. So, um, first... If you like what's going on here, please like and subscribe and comment and all of those things. I do reply to all the comments, uh, even if it's just with a heart. I do read them all. And uh, if I have something to add, I add, <laughs> answer, uh, you know, whatever that requires. Um, let me see if this is better if I open this curtain up a little more. I don't know. It makes it dark for me. I can't tell if it's dark for you. <laughs> Um, I don't think it changes a whole lot. <laughs> so I'm going to make it not dark for me so I can see you better. Uh, so let's see. Today is, uh, as I said, Sunday and the girls have been now in their dorm room for, uh, for a week. Um, we moved them in, well, a week and a day today. We moved them in Saturday a week ago. And today I'm taking them their blankets. They're all done. And so we're, Amanda and I, my daughter, we're going to the college. It's not far from here. It's maybe a 15, 20 minute drive from my house. Um, so we're going to take the blankets to them this evening. And um, I'm very excited to do that. And I will take video if I can uh, and pictures for sure. And, uh, you know, import them into the next video so you guys can see. Uh how the girls, you know, their reactions and uh, what the blankets look like together. I haven't seen them all laid out, like, buttoned together either because it's, they're big. <laughs> and so I just fold them up and put them in a bag. Uh, so we'll button them up and take a picture in their dorm room and hopefully it'll be real cute. So that's happening today. <clears throat> Excuse me, I left my water bottle downstairs. Uh, and let's see what else. Uh, then I, oh, the rainbow blanket that was my son's, it's, it's packed up in one of those bags I just bought. I'll show you the bags. Um, I got these big, huge bags. This is the last one I have. I'm going to have to order more. They hold so much stuff. Um, so anyway, that rainbow baby blanket, uh, it was in a video or two ago. Uh, the I think the video is titled, What Pattern Is This? And you guys came through. You knew the pattern. So, uh, Madonna, my queen, uh, my mentor, my teacher, she has made several of them. Madonna, I'm telling you, I have read this pattern and I know I'm going to need help. I was hoping that I could make the blanket big enough to be a Boggy Creek blanket. It says you make it with three weight yarn and um, you know, it, it lists different size hooks, but it should make, you know, for different parts of the blanket, I think, uh, or different, it's a blanket, uh, a, a sweater and booties all in the same pattern. And the blanket is only one page. It's very small print, um, and I couldn't, I didn't know how to make it larger to print it. Uh, I'm going to have to play with that because it's very small print. But a lot of it is, you know, granny square in the center, and then it grows, and then you do other stuff. And so maybe if you used four weight yarn, the Boggy Creek blankets um, have to be 35 to 40 inches wide, 40 to 50 inches long. So you can do a square because that was a square blanket, you know, like 40 by 40 uh, would fit the parameters. Um, so I don't know, I don't know if using a four weight yarn would make it that much bigger, uh, you know, on a bigger hook. Could you just 
do four weight yarn and this is calling for I think like a three and a half to four millimeter so if you used a six and a four weight yarn would that make it big enough do you think to go up like 12 inches um because it does say that this is a 28 to 20 uh 28 inch square blanket um and i really want it to be 40. <laughs> uh so i don't know uh, uh, madonna did say that you have to keep track of your stitch counts make sure that your counts are correct that's what she really remembers about the pattern she's done it years and years ago and she made several of them uh so if i like make the granny square bigger in the middle then everything gets bigger um and you could make the blanket bigger that way i just don't know if i could figure out how to you know can always add more rounds of border at the end i reckon uh so if i go with a four weight yarn and um i didn't uh, and a bigger hook. I'm going to try that uh, when I'm feeling really ambitious. <laughs> uh, it's not going to be this week. I can tell you that. Uh, anyway, it's called the Crochet Rainbow Set Blanket, Jacket, and Booties. And it is available on Ravelry. I paid, uh, I think it was $5.99 plus tax for the download for all three pieces. So I didn't think that was so bad. Uh, it but like I said, it is very small print. Um, I did not print the picture, but I will try to put the link in in the back. And I should have taken the blanket out, but I didn't, so I apologize. I do have pictures of it, of the actual blanket made. Uh, I have a whole video, well, not a whole video about it, but I do have a video with it in there a couple of videos back. Um, so please check that out if you want to see the blanket or go to Ravelry, because I'm going to try to link it. In the description box below uh, so that is a project that I want to make um, and thank you all so much for the help because that's very cool uh, you guys knew right off I'm like wow so let's see that's the rainbow blanket and the girls uh, so then we have the double duck dare um, I'm not gonna quack in your ear today but here is the quacker uh, Laura from Mad Mamie's crochet and farming Oh, oh, and by the way, Madonna has a channel. If you don't know her, I don't know where you've been your whole life because you're missing out. Uh, so do go subscribe to her. I will link her in the description as well. Um, many of you have come up with the um, with the pattern and, and new, but Madonna, there's a, a fly. Madonna, uh, she's the one that, her and Trisha from Mama Swift, they're the ones that really got me into crocheting and, and teaching me. Uh, so visit Trisha as well. I will link her. I better write these people down now. Let's see. Now we have Laura, Madonna, Trish, Boggy Creek. Oh, I mentioned that. So let's just really quick hop over to Boggy Creek before we go down with the double dog beer. Uh, Boggy Creek is a blanket campaign that we are raising for Boggy Creek Camp in uh, Eustis, Florida. Uh, the blankets, as I said, have to be 35 to 40 inches wide, 40 to 50 inches long. It's a camp for chronically ill children. Um, Nancy from She's Got Yarn 2, Billy, the crafty Floridian, and I are uh, doing a blanket drive because of Nancy's mom, Sue. She started it uh, with her women's group asking for a few blankets and then Nancy asked me for a few blankets then we asked you all for a few blankets and it became a thing and uh so it's hashtag boggy creek 2024 for this year last year we raised over 360 blankets I think and this year we want to double that and have over 700 uh 750 would be fabulous uh to help us with that Linian um from Nina's Knots you don't know any of these people they will all be listed below in the description box she is sending saying send your squares to me um which i am doing uh if you have five by five squares uh if you make them and you don't want to make the entire blanket 
uh, if you have a few to even a lot, but if you have a few for sure and you're like, yeah, I, I like making the squares. I hate the, the drawing. Send them to Lenann. Uh, her channel and her address will be listed in the description box below. And she will join them with others that she's receiving and make blankets. And I think she's going to come with us to donate them because she also lives in Florida. And we will be donating the blankets in February. Uh, if you're sending, Lenann will accept the squares through, I think she said October 15th or October, no, I lied. Uh, I think Lenann is accepting the squares through November 30th. Um, Nancy is accepting blankets through January 30th. Uh, you know, have them to us by then, so to her by then. Um, you can send them to me if it's, or if you live in, in my area, um, we can even meet and pick them up, meet for lunch or whatever, and I'll pick them up for you. Because I'm driving to Florida um, for us to deliver. I, I mean, we're vacationing in Florida <laughs> uh, this winter. Um, and uh, so I can drive them down. If, we, if we're, you know, not too far away from each other. Uh, I'm in the greater Cleveland area. I'll be glad to pick up your blankets and take them down there. Um, and now my good friend Laura from Mad Mimi's Crochet and Farming is doing the Double Duck Dare. If you send 17 five by five squares made uh, hopefully of acrylic. Yeah, I think she's only asking for acrylic. Uh, five by five acrylic granny squares. If you send them to an Ann and you put a little note in there that this is the Double Duck Dare. Laura sent me Double Duck Dare and you say quack quack. Uh, for every 17 you send in, because Laura is an oddball duck, uh, send in 17 squares, say uh, she will make three, because again, she's an oddball duck, uh, <laughs> but we love her to death. So 17 squares, three gets three more squares from Laura. Uh, if you say quack quack, she'll throw in a couple more extra, and, um, you know, add to the blanket combinations there. Uh, so that is Double Duck Dare. That is uh, Lynn Ann and her squares. Send squares to Lynn Ann. Um, I think she has a hashtag, send your squares to me. Hashtag, send your squares to me. Um, I am making some just because Laura hates to make granny squares. I mean, I'm making Boggy Creek blankets myself anyway. But I am going to send squares to Linnan. I'm going to send her solid squares mostly. Um, because then I only have two ends to weave in. <laughs> if the square is solid. Uh, so I'm going to send her so mostly solid squares. Use up some of my scraps. These were scraps that uh, from this Pretty in Pink Super Saver. Uh, and I, that one is finished. I used this very to make the center so this is going to be a multicolored only because I used up the end of that color just and then started the red which this is a uh, I love this yarn um, from Hobby Lobby so that is a project that I'm working on I am also going to to today hopefully start uh, definitely start and maybe finish a test pattern for my good friend Joe at Joe's Web. I'm so excited to do this. Um, and we'll let you know when I can show you that. I will definitely show it to you. But I'm going to start that as soon as this video is over. Uh, and that'll be another thing on the hook. So I'm excited for that. And finally, knit happens. So let's see. Oh, wait. I do have Pamela's project. We'll give you a quick look at that too. This is lots of stuff in this jam packed full. Uh, I did work on the knit project from Pamela. Pamela's adoring crochet. Uh, she, oh, congratulations, Pamela. She just got married. I'm so excited for her. Uh, I hope the wedding went smoothly. I hope you have a great honeymoon, whatever you're doing. And, um, she has a shawl pattern that's coming out in a book, a crochet 
magazine in the spring. I can't remember which magazine. Uh, so look forward to it. The pattern is wonderful. I am making a fall shawl. Um, because the yarn I have that I thought would be beautiful in it, and it is, is uh, sadly a yarn you can't get anymore. It's uh, Yarn Be Dazzling that I got on clearance uh, from Hobby Lobby. And I totally love this yarn. Uh, the sad thing about the way that I I like clearance shop that is the I don't buy yarn at full price unless it's like I need one more skein to finish the project and it's the only way I'm going to get it. Um, because yarn is too expensive and I like to buy it, but I like to buy it cheap. A lot of the problem with buying clearance yarn is that it's clearance <laughs> and you can't get it anymore. And I find I like that yarn and it's gone. Uh, so that's kind of a sad thing. So, let's see, knit happens. Laura gets me in trouble. Laura from Man, Mimi's Crochet and Farming. We are doing a knit double dog dare. This is a dog dare, not a duck dare. She double dog dared us to make this uh, Mama in a Stitch Fall Cuddler. Uh, if you've been around for a while, you've seen it many times. This is uh, what it looks like. I hope, I hope I'm centered in there. Uh, you put up a piece of paper in front of your face, you can't see what you're getting on the computer or on the. Uh, it's a real nice blanket. I really enjoy doing this. And we are doing four rows a week. We started at three rows a week. Now we're up to four rows a week. I am done through this coming up Friday. Uh, then I have four more rows of the same, and then it changes. The pattern changes. I hate it when the pattern changes. <laughs> I know what I'm doing here. And we this is repeating what we've already done. So I know that I know what to do with that as well. Um, but I have been working on this for a while now. Well, we all have. I have also enlisted the help of Knit 101 because I am not a knitter. I picked this book up, I think, at Ollie's. Um, and it shows you how to do all of the stitches that you need to do. And it has, well, oh, there's some stitches that you need to do. Uh, and then it has patterns in it. And some of them are quite involved. Like, look at that. Definitely not a beginner pattern. Um, but then it has, I think this one would be relatively easy for a sweater. You know, but it's got hats and, and fingerless gloves and other such uh, nice book. I like it. It's been very helpful, along with some uh, tutorials, several million people that I watched. Um, and this is the blanket. Now, I will not give this blanket away because it definitely has mistakes in it, like everywhere. It's the first thing that I've ever knitted, and it I love it. Um, and I don't know if you're looking at the front. Oh, th this is the front. So this is all what we're doing right now. The uh, Since you've seen it, I've added eight rows of the knit one side, purl the other side, and it gives you that stitch, um, which has a name, uh, garter or stockinette. I, sorry, I can't remember which is which. Then you've got the opposite stitch in here too, which is... Um, one is garter where you get the V's on the one side and one is stockinette where it's bumpy on both sides, right? I think I got that part right. Um, <clears throat> but I'm really enjoying it. It has a built-in border. I'm using a another Clarence yarn, which I totally love. It is a Yarn B, uh, Baby B, lots of dots. It's a five weight yarn. Now this blanket pattern said use a six weight. I didn't have a six weight. So the blanket is not 35 inches wide. Um, the, it's not as big as what the pattern says it's going to be because I'm using a smaller yarn. Makes sense. I don't even remember what size the pattern said it was going to be, but it, it's about 35 inches wide and you cast on 82 to start with. Um, and I don't know how long it's going to be because it's not done. But I'm liking it a, a great deal, enough that I wanted to make something similar, but I want, I'm finding that just knitting one side and purling one side is very, almost like therapeutic. 
you get the movement you get the like you have to think a little bit i don't have to think a whole lot on how to nib and purl any longer i know which is which i'm even learning what they look like when they come off the needles so that i know if i did the right stitch before i'm you know four rows later and say oh you did that all wrong um i haven't moved up my lifeline you can see it. it's way back here like at the beginning of this part of the pattern um i probably should move it up i keep talking about moving it up and then i haven't i do not know how to if i drop a stitch pick it up everyone tells me it's not hard and several people will you know are i know are available to show me how to do that if and when I need to do that, I'm hoping I just don't ever need to do that. <laughs> I do know how to like back up a stitch and put like put it back on if I realize oh I just purled and I needed to knit. I do know how to stick it back on my hook and fix our needle and fix that. Like right now, I can even do one or two stitches. Um, but if I lose a stitch, I'm 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 stopping right there and I can't fix it until we you know I'm gonna need a I'm gonna need a tutor at that point. Um, but because I really do enjoy knitting and purling, and I have figured out that I can just do that, um, and if you mark the right side of your work, which I had not ever really considered doing, or didn't because I didn't know the difference. Now I know what I'm looking for, so I know that I can just mark the one side and move on, so I'm excited about that. And know that this is the right side and this is the side that should look like this if I'm just going to knit and purl and knit and purl. So I decided to start another blanket and this one is for Boggy Creek. I am uh, stealing not the whole pattern. Um, I'm not doing the whole thing. I, uh, I'm just going to kind of do my own thing. Now I am using, this is Hobie Yarn. Uh, and it is this first one, I'm done with one skein of Hobie yarn. It's Amigo Chunky, and it's a friend's yarn. So that means that um, I can buy the Amigo Chunky in this color, which is number 15. It's a You'll see it in a minute. It's like a navy. And if I buy the Amigo, or uh, if I buy another friend's yarn, color number 15 is going to be the exact same color. Even if it's a chenille, like their uh, honey bunny yarn, number 15 will be the same color as this number 15. So if you wanted to mix and match your yarns, uh, but you wanted the color to be the same, but the yarn to be different for different kind of texture, uh, you can do that. If it's a variegated, uh, all the colors in the variegation, you'll be able to get solids to match perfect. So this is, do not fall off my needle. Now these are uh, the needles that have the, the needles that I'm using on the Chunky Ball Cuddler are clover, I believe they were clover needles, and they have a metal wire. This is a set of interchangeables. Uh, I received, I, I purchased at, at uh, Michael's when they were on clearance, and they have the plastic wire. I'm not real fond of the plastic wire. Uh, it is, as the blanket is getting bigger, uh, it is straightening out and not being so curvy, but it was really curvy for, for a bit. Um, maybe if I steamed it, it would have straightened out. Um, but they are interchangeables and I they are bamboo, just like my others. I don't think I am uh, knit suave enough, I think that's the word, to want to try the uh, aluminum needles yet the metal ones because they're real slippery uh so anyway i on this one i wanted to make sure that it gets to be in the 35 to 40 parameters for boggy creek and i have not measured so let's do that i have a ruler right here oh i think i'm gonna be way big oh as far as the width goes so i have this little table let's see if i can straighten it out enough on the table to get an idea of what my length is on here. I might be two more into the 40 to 50 
because my good friend Laura had an idea for that as well. Okay, so we're at 36 here. Oh, let's pull this down. And oh, it's way too big. I meant more like 56. No, wait, 36, 46. Okay. Okay. So you're um my idea was to go like 40, 35 to 40 wide. Um, <clears throat> so this is about 50 wide, no, uh, 30, 46 wide. So that's going to be the length. So I'm going to knit it sideways. <laughs> That'll work. Um, uh, and then just make sure that I knit it so that it's 40, no longer than 40 rows up because the, so oh, that'll still work. It'll still be in the parameters. It's just not going to be the direction I thought it was going to be, but that's okay. Um, so 46 and one skein got me, uh, oh, you're looking at the back. Let's show you the front. So this got me, oh, there we go. Uh, it's hard to see cause it's dark yarn, but there's bumpies where you're knitting one side, um, no knitting the whole thing on this bumpy section here at the bottom where the stitch marker is. And then here is knit a section, knit a row, purl a row, so you get the Vs. Might be a little hard to see in the dark yarn, but I'm gonna tell you guys, if you are knitting, if you are crocheters only, um, and you hate crocheting with dark yarn because you can't see the stitches, when you knit, dark yarn doesn't matter. Um, because your stitches are all on your on your needle so you know exactly where to put your needles you don't have that oh it's on dark yarn and I can't see it I haven't had that issue with this at all I don't have to have super bright lights I crocheted this um, or knitted <laughs> I knitted on this around the campfire under yellow bug lights and had no problem I ran out of yarn so I had to stop uh, so next color is going to be a lighter blue and I'm going to do that until that yarn stops and hopefully I have um, the navy I had two skeins of the navy I have two skeins of a light blue two skeins of a green and then I have one skein of cream so my plan was to do the navy one of each cream in the middle and then reverse it out so it would be you know um, just stripes big wide stri sections well uh, like that wide of a section <laughs> of each color uh, and hopefully that'll make the 40 inches I need for the next side uh, and that is all I have for you today uh, Hold on just one second. Oh, darn. I got a phone call and it shut off my video. <laughs> so sorry about that. But I was at the end anyway, so I just want to say goodbye. Uh, I am going to go make a test pattern. I'm so excited about that. I'm going to try a yarn um, that I haven't ever liked working with before, but I think it might be good for this pattern. Uh, so cross your fingers. If not, I have I have alternates, so no problem there. Um, but I promised that I would get that going today. And so that is next on my agenda. I just, while I was on the phone, took out my next color of yarn. I'll show it to you real quick. Uh, for my Boggy Creek Knit Happens blanket. It is the uh, Amigo Chunky in this color. So this is what's going to go next. Um, and we'll do that one until it runs out. I'm going to end it on an even row, though, so I don't want no Joe CD going wacko on me. Uh, I'm, I want it to end on the ends, so I don't know if knitting a row and then purling a row takes up more yarn or less yarn than um, knitting all the way across both sides. So that we'll find out. <clears throat> Doesn't matter either way. There's not going to be like, oh, I've got, I'm, I'm not going to be as... Uh, 
OCD about it as, oh, I've got 15 rows of this and I have to have 15 rows of that. If I've got 20 rows of yarn, it's going 20 rows. Um, it's not going to be that, that color specific. Um, I don't think it's going to be that much of a difference anyway because the stitches are pretty much similar. Um, so that's where I'm at on my Knit Happens yarn journey is that we're going to make a, we're going to knit a blanket for Boggy Creek. And I'm really excited. Uh, I was telling you about how the dark colors are not a problem. When I was going through my yarn, I forgot I have several, uh, I have a several black and garnet and white um, chunky yarns in the big balls. And I think I, um, of course the white isn't an issue, but the black is, I'm like been afraid to use it. And I think I have three skeins of that. Um, but I might do something similar with the black and the garnet and the white. Um, but I have the big balls so I can be a little more creative with the, with the placement of the colors. But I'm thinking those might be knit boggy break. Those will be knit. <laughs> Whatever it is, that's going to be knitted. <laughs> maybe it'll be a sweater for somebody. Um, maybe it'll be Boggy Creek Blankets. But the black, for sure, is going on the knitting needles and not on a crochet hook. And I'm so excited about that. Uh, I, ha I have black yarn that I like. don't like to use. I mean, I can double crochet, single crochet, you know, but like to do stuff that's more than just a straight line. I don't like to use black. Um, or granny squares is good for black. <laughs> you know, don't put it in the space. Not an issue. Um, so my, my living room is never real bright. And so crocheting dark yarn in there, you have to have the neck light and it's, it's a pain in the rear. <laughs> if you ask me, I would go with, give me a lighter color. Uh, so I am excited that it, I don't think knitting with black is going to be much of an issue. Uh, so I'm kind of liking that a whole lot. All right. That really and truly is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and all of that. And I will see you guys in the next video, uh, hopefully with some really cool pictures of the girls and their blankies. All right. I'll see you later. Bye.